Hey, welcome everybody to this webinar today. Um, we're gonna get started here in about three minutes. Uh, working on setting screens up here, uh, just so that people know, um, there are several more trainings coming up this year. You should be able to see a list of our upcoming trainings. You are in the ShareLaw video intro training and uh, video making tips. That's gonna be today's training. We're gonna get started here at about three minutes after. I'm just gonna test and make sure that slides are moving forward and everything's looking good. Excellent. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to drop them in the question box. Um, let me see if I can rearrange screens a little bit so that I'm not looking off screen all the time. How is the audio quality cut? Uh, it's sounded pretty good. Uh, is any of the air conditioning coming through on my end? Nope. Okay, sounds good. Excellent. Uh, we're gonna give it about a minute and a half here. Let a few more people log on. Uh, we've got a list of all of our upcoming trainings here on the screen. Uh, all of our trainings are free and all of our trainings are recorded and archived to be put on our YouTube uh, channel. We've got over 150 YouTube videos. Uh, most of them are an hour and a half long. Several of them though have started to also be very short summary versions of things that we're talking about. We did a accessibility series that I'm gonna talk about a little bit later that's all two to three minute videos talking about web accessibility and how you can make your website more accessible. We're gonna be adding an accessibility training a little bit later on this year. We're talking to a vendor right now. Let's see where we are. We've got a few people already logged in here. We're gonna give it one more minute before starting up. If you've got any questions, there are really two ways to add questions into this webinar. Uh, number one is there's a question box. Anything you type into the question box, uh, we will read aloud so that everybody can hear the question. Uh, the second thing is to use the raise your hand function and then myself or Ket uh, will unmute you and you can just speak the question aloud. If you've got a question over anything, please bring it up. Um, we are this industry, both legal and tech, um, kind of assume particular pieces of knowledge. We're trying to do everything in plain language here, but if anything comes up, just please ask a question. Uh, we're gonna get started here as we are uh, about two minutes after the hour. Let's get slides moving. Um, this is a video tips training and a share law video org training. So a little bit of background about myself. <clears throat> My name is Sart Rowe. You may know me as the head of LSNTAP, the Legal Services National Technology Assistance Project, where I try to help all of you implement new technology. Um, I've got a one-on-one -on -one counseling next week where I'm working with a program down in Florida that wants to record some trainings and do video work. Uh, Anything that you've got for questions like that, please feel free to send them to me and I'm happy to help out. Myself, Ket, I've got a summer intern um, here from the ATJ Tech Fellows. We're all here to help out. Uh, I have also worked with several other uh, YouTube channels and other nonprofits. I'm on the board over at Northwest Consumer Law Center. I teach occasionally at UW's Information School and SU Law. Um, and then I've worked on private projects such as Mythic MTG Tech and Meeple's included. Um, I'm in-house here at Northwest Justice Project in the Seattle area. So if you are ever in the Seattle area, please feel free to uh, drop me an email and I'm happy to sit down in person and also talk about anything tech and law related. I love videos. Personally, I started doing videos to understand how to better archive our own videos. And now I do personal videos also all the time. We had a training about a month ago, which some of you may have attended. I'm not going to be rehashing uh, things that were in that training or only slightly mentioning them. I would strongly recommend checking that training out. It's under new video resources for legal aid. There's also a 10 page guide uh, that was published on doing user testing and best practices for video. Um, that is downloadable at lsntap.org. It is on the front page uh, linked there. 
Um, one of the big questions that people keep asking is what type of software to use. Most of the video production that I do include screen captures, putting together some type of slides, talking over those slides, and then capturing it directly off of the screen. The three best options personally out there, um, I like open broadcast software. Um, it is a free open source tool that makes it really easy to capture everything that's going on on your screen and everything that is going on from your uh, web browser or from your video camera. Um, iMovie is also free on Macs um, or $15 if you've got an older Mac and you need to upgrade. Um, very, very, very powerful tool at a very reasonable price. Um, Camtasia is a great piece of software if you want to do a little bit of video editing, add some professional touches, uh, titles, slot, things that slide in and out, animation, set up themes, that type of thing. Uh, it is about $200. It is a very good piece of software. Um, I've used all of these. Daniel Ediger has used iMovie a lot. Um, there are more powerful tools out there. Getting into video, I don't believe that you need them. When you start to do video on a regular basis, there are some things that can be added. For video editing, Audacity is one that I've used um, a lot, which is open source and free. Um, Ket uses Adobe Creative for a lot of the video stuff that he does here. A very powerful tool. The more you use it, the easier it becomes. The learning curve on it is higher than any of the three tools that I've got here. Uh, I also strongly recommend putting together a computer for doing video editing. Most legal services, offices, your standard computer is made to do word processing and web browsing and your basic video editing is going to really slow down, stop the computer. It's gonna take a lot longer to do video editing. The price range that you're looking at for a solid video editing computer is about the thousand to $1,500 range. And the four real factors that you want to look at is a video card, a good processor, some hard drive space to save those videos, which you don't have to necessarily save the videos to the local machine. It could be a server somewhere else. And then RAM. With those four major components, you will speed up your editing time significantly. Your real-time editing will go much, much smoother. It, it's well worth it to have a dedicated uh, computer that does video editing for that staff member who does it. Um, we're moving into some tips here for creating videos. Make sure your titles are extremely simple. Think about what people search for. Although you're going to probably put your videos up on your law help site and on YouTube, most individuals are going to find them through search on YouTube or on Google or Bing or any other tool out there. And the title tells the search engine so much about what the video covers. So make the title simple, make the title short, the particular video that we've got here, I would actually improve the title a little bit by removing the Northwest Justice Project as they already get that metadata from the channel as it's Northwest Justice Project's channel and just start with the Washington State Fair Tenant Screening Act and make it simple, make it the answer to some type of a question. Another thing that I strongly recommend is using a comic book uh, style for a lot of your videos or slides. I grew up uh, with comic books and they add a really nice compelling visual element. The artwork does not have to be amazing. The artwork can be very simple, but it has several advantages to it. Uh, Northwest Justice Project has a significant number of videos that have been done in this style. The ability to update these when the law changes is really, really high. If you used a physical actor and did kind of a traditional talking head with a bunch of bookshelves in the background, it's very difficult to then go back to that actor and then slice in or change a small portion of the video. When that video is updated, it's much, much easier and much more reusable to have some non-moving visuals in the front and an audio track over it. 
it also is much easier to do a second or third or fourth language because you can reuse the visuals, change the text that's on screen and record a new audio for it. So you're 80% of the way done with the video after you've done it in one language and transferring it to multiple languages is just much, much easier at that point. Uh, your visuals can be pretty compelling also. Uh, this is a comic book project that um, I've been contributing to over on Pop-Up Justice uh, that will start as a comic book explaining some of your rights in the law and then also become a video series. Although you don't need those super fancy graphics. There's a lot of free trainings, tips, tools that are out there. Um, YouTube has an incredible creator academy that is free. Anybody with a YouTube account can take a look at and walk through a bunch of different courses that are designed to help you optimize your videos. They cover everything such as the length of the video, how to put together thumbnails, which is something that I'm gonna talk about a little bit later, uh, how to look into the analytics. The analytics are extremely powerful when it comes to YouTube. You are able to easily see when people drop off. You can then adjust and see what is it in your video that is having people leave? Are you asking them to go to a resource and file something? Or did you put a visual on the screen that's too complicated and people are just tuning out? So being able to look at those user insights as they come forward is extremely useful. Another big thing that people ask me is where can we get content that, is, that we can use for our videos? And I'm actually gonna do a little bit of a demo here with the Creative Commons search. So I'm gonna be moving out of the slides here and trying this live. Um, one really important thing is to make sure that you've got copyright covered and I'm gonna cover copyright a little bit more, but Creative Commons has a search page that is extremely easy to use and has several different types of content uh, that is available. So let's move over here to the Creative Commons search. And this is just available right up here at search.creativecommons.com. And what it does is it takes a bunch of popular sites, including Google image searches and Pixabay and YouTube, and lets you directly search for things that you can use. In this case, I've got checked use for commercial purposes and modify, adapt, or build upon. So that's gonna, let, that's gonna give me the most open license possible that is going to let me incorporate it into my own things. With regards to legal services, many of the things we do are non-commercial. I don't think you actually need to hit the commercial uh, purpose here, um, although I like using things that are most open so that other people can remix them, uh, but that is definitely your choice. Um, let's say that we're looking at debt here and we're looking for an image that would be useful for debt. We've chosen um, Google Images here, and then it will bring up a search on Google Images um, of different images that we could use in our videos. Um, right here, this one is over on Flickr. So we're gonna have to go to Flickr to figure out exactly what the license is on this. Uh, the license is right here. And the icons show you what the license is. This is a Creative Commons by, which means you've got to attribute the author. And additionally, um, the resources that you make have to be under an open license. That's what the share alike is here. If you click on this, it gives you a very simple human readable deed that shows you what the rights are. If you're not going to probably modify this image, so the need to the share alike um, is not going to be that applicable. Probably gonna use the image as it is, um, but definitely you're going to have to attribute there. Now let's look at another image and see if we can find one with a little bit even more open uh, license from that. Um, the URLs that in things come from will often tell you how open the license is. And I'm actually gonna go all the way back to Creative Commons search um, and try this again on Pixabay. Um, a lot of the things that come up here um, are going to be under a Creative Commons zero license. Uh, this is a public domain dedication. That means you don't even have to give credit um, in using that license. Uh, you can just add it directly into 
whatever video you're doing. Uh, this here, definitely I could see how that would be useful in a debt video. Um, very easy tool, very simple to find individual pieces of art. Um, this also works for music. Uh, SoundCloud has a very strong collection of uh, tracks that are available under a license. Usually you just have to give a credit uh, to the artist and a link back to them in the video credits and you're able to use them right away. Um, let's head back over to the slides here and present this. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions as things come up. Uh, another really big tip for using YouTube in particular uh, and also for putting it on a law help website is create playlists so that people can quickly find one resource and then see related resources. Uh, this is a playlist that we did around accessibility and they're all one to five minute videos on making your website more accessible. If someone finds any one of these videos anywhere online uh, through this playlist, it then brings them to the playlist and continues to show the related content there. It also basically lets Google and search engines know that although these have different titles, they are related and increases the chance that they'll be found for related items. Thumbnails are extremely important uh, when it comes to putting videos out. Having a graphic image that is very easy to show people what the content is makes it much easier people for people to find your content when browsing through a giant list. Most of the search engine results for videos, especially on YouTube, but also on Google and Bing, will show this thumbnail image. These are two that we've recently put up on YouTube. One of them already has a thumbnail that makes it extremely easy to see that this is about user experience. The other one, we haven't put a thumbnail ad, it just randomly chooses an area inside of the video. Um, the difference in these professional-wise is night and day. Uh, we will be adding a thumbnail to the quick access toolbars. That's just one that we recently put up where the thumbnail hasn't populated yet. Um, one of the quickest ways to make a thumbnail, uh, Google Drive has a present or a slides and that's actually what we're looking at right here. This is the slideshow presentation you're looking at. Um, if I was going to do a thumbnail for this, I would take the title screen that I had, cut out most of the text and make it larger, and then put an image here that let people know exactly what this was talking about. I'd probably take this share law video and I would turn this into a little bit of a screen capture of share law video and make it much larger. Um, I'd, move these logos down to be smaller and make it as visual as possible in doing this. So we've kind of run through some of my basic tips for creating video content. And the next thing that we're gonna do is look at sharelawvideo.org. Um, this is a website that LSNTAP um, took over from Atlanta and has been hosting for about a year and a half, almost two years at this point. Um, just like the Creative Commons search, this is a place where you can find resources that are available to anybody in the legal services community for free. Everything that is up here has been created by other legal services organizations, been used for their own content, and you can take this content, repurpose it, and reuse it. Um, one of the big things that we did here, uh, the guides that I talked about earlier um, are posted here. So the how to make and test videos with limited time and money is posted here. Any of our new resources show up here in the new uploads. Um, we have changed the site some so that it is much easier to get to the content. Uh, this whole site used to be behind a login. There's still the opportunity to create a count at and log in, but in order to access the resources, you do not need to log in. You just need to provide your name, your organization's name, and your email. 
And that sends us a email letting us know that the resource has been downloaded and by who. We keep track of that for grant reporting and to see how useful this site is. Uh, but each of the different resources that are here are downloadable right away. Um, we've made many of the things available both in Movie Maker and in iMovie. So for example, this is a video on what to do if you are sued. The original branding from the organization who donated this has been removed, so you can just add your own branding. What's the video here? itself is here, so you're able to preview it, watch, uh, watch it, and then download the individual pieces to use in your organization itself. Um, it has a link also to all of the PowerPoint slides that were used. So if you wanna go in and customize those slides, maybe there's something in this video where the law is different in your jurisdiction, you can go in, edit those slides, um, and then you give um, credit with regards to the original creators of this. All of, uh, we've got a series of quick start guides uh, that are put in place. Um, this here is a finished video with regards to SSI over payment. Um, this kind of uses that comic book style that we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, but what it does is it takes a series of still images and those still images have um, kind of your uh, speech bubbles over them. And then we, someone reads out uh, each of these. You could go back with the original slides here and customize the text for any of these and then add your own uh, additions to it using the images that are there. Uh, this is an alternative to kind of using the hand drawn or using icon base. You can get together staff, take some pictures, add the speech bubbles uh, in Keynote, add them in PowerPoint, add them in Google Slides extremely easily. Once again, this also is much easier to do multiple languages uh, than doing live actors. You're able to go back through, change the language that shows up on the screen and uh, use a different narrator for creating the audios there. Anybody who creates content for a legal services organization that would like to share that content, there's two ways to get things on this site. One of them is to create an account and upload it yourself. Um, it's very easy. There's where this My Account button is. There's a Create Account. We ask for about three pieces of information and we approve accounts within 24 hours. If your account is not approved within 24 hours, please email me. We will figure out what's going on. Um, but additionally, if you've got a bunch of video content, you can just contact myself directly and we will work with you to upload that video content. Um, maybe we set up a Dropbox, share those items, upload it and tag it. If you provide us the text explaining what it is, uh, we can also put that content up there directly. But as a reminder, you don't need to create an account in order to access everything that is on ShareLaw Video. It's open, it's easy to use, and it's under an open license that will let you use it. Originally, there was a custom license uh, that talk specifically about legal services organizations. Most of the organizations that have donated material, we've talked to them about using a slightly more open license, uh, Creative Commons, non-commercial license, which I'm gonna cover here in a minute. Let's move back to the slides here. Um, as I said, we removed the login and made it really easy. Most of the content is now under an attribution, non-commercial license. Uh, that means you can use it, as long as um, you give credit to the original org that created it and you use it in a non-commercial way. If you want to create videos and sell them in some way, you've got to go back to the original creator and talk to them. Uh, that at, at Putting this Creative Commons license in your credit screen at the end uh, is, is all you need to do um, in order to share content in that way. If you've got more questions about copyright, we've done a full long webinar specifically about copyright and published a 20-page guide on the basics to copyright and fair use. Myself and Liz Lehman uh, put that together a few years back. Um, also, 
the video for that and all of our other videos are up on YouTube at NTAP videos. We've got over 150 videos there, ranging from what we've been talking about today and video resources um, to artificial intelligence, using it in legal aid. Uh, we had a wonderful webinar about nine months ago by Ivy Ashton uh, that covered that. Any topics related to video creation or anything else that you would like to see on here, we're happy to do videos um, for. And I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube NTAP channel. We've added a new series where hopefully every week, but at least every two weeks, we are updating what's going on in the legal services community, letting people know about projects uh, that are being launched, best practices. These are little three to five minute videos um, called This Week in Legal Services Technology. Uh, I'd like to open it up at this point for questions. If people have any questions related to content that they're creating, things that they would like to try to do, um, please let me know. So how many individuals in the audience um, have created videos already? Or what type of videos have you created? So we've got uh, Noah Samuels over at Northwest Consumer Law Center. Um, has the They did a short intro to bankruptcy video. Um, one of the best places to try to find uh, potential topics for videos is look at your statewide website's uh, hits for particular resources and think about which resources are being used again and again. Any type of a question that comes up again and again in a clinic um, or is being accessed a lot online may be ideal for creating a short video. Uh, we are working on a video right now at Northwest Justice Project that will help people request their credit report and help us help them with regards to the debt clinics uh, that we do. Giving a client a little bit of background and a starting point done in plain language is very, very helpful for counseling them because then they're at least one or two steps into understanding what you're talking about uh, at the very beginning. Um, we've had questions about where to distribute videos before and the, the top three choices that we kind of see legal services organizations and other people using are um, YouTube, Facebook, and Vimeo. Um, there's a pretty big difference between those three ways to distribute video. Uh, with regards to Vimeo, you're able to do higher quality or very high quality videos on there, and you are able to put them behind a password. Um, if you have things that you do not want other people seeing, Vimeo is by far uh, the easiest choice to add a password. If there is no reason to have it behind a password, I strongly recommend just making it publicly available. One of the things that comes up a lot is uh, recording continuing legal education seminars for advocates. And if that information is generally useful to a broader community, it can be a great way to get some additional hits to your YouTube channel, to build your reputation in the community, to put out some high quality content record that CLE and put it up publicly. Now, if you've got strategic things in there about how you're approaching cases, or if you have very personal client stories that you don't want put out there very publicly, then Vimeo is definitely the better option putting it behind a password. Facebook, short term, you're likely to get many more hits in a video for, from Facebook but Facebook values immediate brand new content higher than everything else. Any video that you put on Facebook will stop getting hits a few months to a few days or even a day later, depending on the type of content and how relevant it is to current conversations. For example, 
uh, when working on a terms of service video and with regards to um, a opt-out clause that needed to be accessed within 30 days of using an application, uh, I chose to distribute that video both through YouTube and through Facebook. I wanted people to see it immediately on Facebook and the traffic was very good within the first few hours, uh, picked up over a thousand views. But on YouTube, it continues to get views to this day where no one continues to watch the Facebook video. So taking the same content and putting it in different channels is useful depending on what you're looking at. Uh, any other questions about creating videos? Um, the last resource that I'd really like to mention here, it is on LSNTAP's homepage. Um, and it is the email group for LSNTAP. We have over 700 people who do legal services projects. And let me pull it up here. Um, this join the email list link is uh, the best resource that we've got. Um, it is the best place to ask a question like, hey, I would like to do a video on this. Has anyone else done a video? Uh, what, is, what are the best practices for this? If you ask there for content that isn't already on Share Law Video, you may find someone else in the community who has already created it. Uh, people are also willing to help with tips, tricks, budgets, basic equipment, upgrading your equipment, anything like that. Uh, the email list is general to all legal services technology, but there's at least 20 of us on there that actively do video related content and are happy to answer questions or meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if you have a Gmail re related account, or an account that you've associated with a Gmail account, you can join yourself. Um, if you do not, you just shoot me an email with your email account and I will manually add you. Um, the Having a Gmail associated account does give you access to the archives, but if you don't have that, you still get access to the entire email list. Um. I guess the last thing that I'd like to mention here is that we do have some tutorials over on Share Law Video that point out um, how to work on particular things. We've got a whole guide to using uh, Movie Maker and to iMovie on creating videos using the templates that are on there that walks you through step by step. Um, these are very easy to follow, very easy to use. It takes probably about two hours to go from no experience to creating your first video with one of these custom pre-made videos. Um, I think that's about all the content that I have here today. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Uh, if you've got any questions, if you see any bugs, if you have any feedback on Share Law Video, uh, feel free to email me. We also have a survey here that is on the front page. Um, we do check those. Any improvements, any type of content that you would like to see, please request it and we will reach out to the community and find individuals and help share other videos that have been created. Also, if you've got a brand new video that you have just launched, please send us a link. Um, we will put it into the This Week in Legal Services tech and share it with the community broadly. Uh, next week's video for This Week in Legal Services is gonna be highlighting two videos that Justice Hub uh, put together, justicehub.tools, uh, which is a site that's out there for helping people pitch their projects and collaborate and work together. And they've started a YouTube channel and we're gonna be sharing some of their videos. I would love to share any of the cool video work that you're doing with a national audience so that other people can get an idea of what they can do. Uh, thank you so much. This has been Sartro with LSNTAP and focusing on share law video and best practices for creating videos.